good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Regional Admission Counselors of California Virtual College Fair. We are excited that you're here. We have a great group of colleges and presenters lined up for you this afternoon. So we're excited to share some information that will hopefully help with your college search process. Um, first, just a few housekeeping announcements from me. Uh, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay, though. If for some reason that changes, just send us a message using the Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar, and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Uh, speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to drop those in the Q&A. Um, starting now, before your college presents, during the presentation, or after, all of our presenters will be monitoring those throughout the whole session and are happy to answer those questions as those um, come in. Uh, also, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered this evening and this spring, so be sure to check that StriveScan website where you signed up. Um, for any additional sessions you might be interested in, as well as all the session recordings will be posted there within about a week on that strivescan.com slash RACC website. So before I turn it over, I want to show you what our schedule looks like for this evening. We are session A2 at the top, so we are going to hear from The Ohio State University, University of Illinois at Chicago, University of Alaska Anchorage, Elon University, University of Pittsburgh, and Marist College. And so with that, I will turn it over to Caitlin with The Ohio State University to kick things off. All right, thank you so much, Tyler. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Caitlin James. I am the Regional Recruitment Manager for The Ohio State University. I am based in San Diego, California. My pronouns are she, her, and you are welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions about Ohio State um, at that email, and I'll also put my contact information there in the chat as well. Um, one thing before we begin, I want to reflect on the current events of what's going on in the world right now, especially in the United States, but as members of The Ohio State University, we can condemn anti-Black racism, uh, anti-Asian Pacific Islander, and to say American racism and racism in all of its forms. We are committed to engaging, interrupting, and dismantling institutionalized racism racism um, and racist structures. So uh, it's really important for us to prepare citizens to be leaders and engage citizens um, to demand and support change. So if you have questions about things that we're doing at Ohio State or in regards to that, please don't have, hesitate to check out the website below. Uh, but Ohio State, we're the third largest public institution in the country. So if you are looking for size and school spirit and a lot of opportunity, we you have come to the right place. We are based in Columbus, Ohio, the capital of Ohio. So a lot of fun things to do, but we have over two 200 different academic majors, over 500 specializations that our students can pursue, but we still allow you a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so you still get that smaller experience, and um, it's kind of what you make it in that experience as well. So you kind of have different ways to integrate with our other students um, and kind of make those classes and experiences a little bit smaller, as I mentioned. Here's kind of an overview of some of the academic offerings that we have at Ohio State. Most popular ones, especially for Californians, are going to be business, engineering, nursing, psychology, um, any of the sciences. We're really outstanding for the health sciences as well. So we have a law school, a med school, a vet school, um, a medical school on our campus. So a variety of different things that you can pursue if you're looking for kind of for or what's after your undergraduate career. So there's a lot of things that our students are able to pursue um, when it comes to those academics. And even if you have no idea what you wanna do, perfectly fine. You can still graduate in four years and as you're exploring the variety of opportunities that we have for our students too. One of the things I love to share is just kind of a little bit about some of the rankings for some of our programs. So again, you can just kind of see a little bit about what makes us stand out um, when it comes to the state of Ohio. Um, we are considered both the flagship and the land grant institution of the state. So it means that you kind of get the best of both worlds when it comes to the institution and the things that we're doing um, at Ohio State and the research that we're producing and all the variety of things that you can do with your program. A couple of things I want to mention just as it comes to what you can expect as a student it. We do, of course, want to encourage our students to get involved in experiential learning, rather. Um, so whether that be with research, study abroad, we have over 100 different programs in over 150 different countries. We even have a campus in Beijing, China, um, variety of different places. So we want to ensure that you get that global perspective as well. Um, that creative expression, a variety of different ways that you can combine that. And you're not limited, particularly just to your major. Every incoming student does receive an Apple iPad as part of your program, and you get to keep it as long as you get to graduate at, from Ohio State. 
And your transition to Ohio State also is a fluid one. We have all of our students are assigned peer leaders at orientation. So these are upperclassmen um, and they're really there to uh, guide you throughout that first year so you can utilize their knowledge um, and understand some of the things that they know. So you're not left alone as you transition to a big institution like Ohio State. That's something that's really important to us. A couple of things I love to highlight too, as far as the academics um, are gonna be your honors and scholars program. So these are ways to make the university a little bit smaller. Honors is open to all academic majors um, and scholars is just based around a particular theme where you do things outside of the classroom. Our moral scholars program is also another great way to make the university kind of smaller. Um, if you are passionate about social based, just, uh, excuse me, social justice service um, and diversity based leadership, this is a wonderful program for you. The scholarship can come with all the way up to full tuition uh, and full cost of a tuition if you receive that as well. So it's another great benefit to our students. So again, kind of an overview of where we're located whenever you're considering where you might be and where you're going. Um, you're within an days drive about 40% of the US population. So you're kind of not in the middle of nowhere, if you might think about it that way. Um, but there's a lot of different things that you are able to do. Um, so you can see a little bit about Columbus in general. It's such a fun city. It's the 15th largest city. Um, I know it says 14th right there, but it's a really great place. Um, you kind of get the best of both worlds. It's really manageable in that regard. So you can, um, it's about a 45 minute walk from campus to the downtown center. So it's kind of a neat way to get the best of both worlds with a big campus and an urban city too. So 15 minutes from the airport. So it's really easy to get into campus as well. We have one of the largest pride parades in the country. So we really are an inclusive campus so you get to really experience that um, and hopefully we'll have pride again this next summer. Um, but the Short Norths is a great place to eat, it's a foodie town, all these kinds of fun things. So a um, few traditions, of course, we really love to spell Ohio, whether that be if I call out OH and someone responds back IO, or you give a go bucks to someone, um, whatever it may be, there's a lot of traditions. We love to spell Ohio in a variety of different ways and some of the ways that you can see there. Quick overview of application and deadlines. So we are on the Common App. We will we need your high school official high school transcript. We will need SAT or ACT test scores sent directly from the institution, not self-reported, if you decide to submit them, because for juniors uh, right now, we are test optional, as well as a letter of recommendation there. Um, and apply by November 15th, or excuse me, 1st, for our early action and scholarship consideration. And I'll just hover here and show you that we do have a $13,500 uh, scholarship award competitive award for our non-resident students. So that's all I got at this point. But if you have any questions, I will be in the Q&A and I'll be responding and I'll turn it over to my next colleague. Awesome. Thanks, Caitlin. Okay, next up, we are going to the University of Illinois at Chicago with Nita. All right. So we are so happy to see you guys today. Thanks for coming out. My name is Nita and I manage West Coast Recruitment for UIC as we call the University of Illinois Chicago. So overall, this is kind of Chicago and I like to show the fun parts. Um, you know, I'm, I'm West Coast. I think we're a little fun and vibrant. Chicago is awesome. I would say the people are gregarious. The food is awesome, et cetera. Um, very strong Midwestern values. So those are probably some of the biggest differences we see. Overall, guys, don't feel afraid, whether you email us personally or reach out however you wish, don't be afraid to ask a question you may think is stupid. We're all here for you. These are very trying times. So we're here to help you explore and find yourself. We have nearly 100 majors at UIC. Um, the top ones coming from the West Coast will be STEM, psychology, business, pre-med and nursing are always top tier. We're considered the medical district because we have four hospitals on site business, theater, law, education, and psych. Those are probably our top majors. We are a tier one research university. And as you can see behind us, Google and McDonald's are like right here next to a great pizza place called Giordano's. We have so many internship opportunities, no matter what your major is. Um, we are called, we are right near the, what's called the West Loop of Chicago. So we're two blocks away from where the Bulls and Blackhawks play, Justin Timberlake concerts, Beyonce concerts. We actually have a huge free exclusive back to school concert called Spark in the Park every year. Um, J. Cole, Kid Cootie, um, probably a lot of acts you can resonate with come by and stop by and see our USC students. But we're also um, close to the Taste of Chicago and Lollapalooza, which is a huge music fest. So you get what's called a U-Pass um, included in your tuition 
And with that, all of these lines that you see that are colored, those are all lines that'll get you to two airports or all across the town or to shopping or to the lakefront and museums. So keep in mind, transportation is awesome. You probably don't need a car. The most, um, I would say the, the most recognizable face that you may know as far as our alums will be Justin from This Is Us, but there are 31,000 students. Our undergrad students are probably running things at about 21, 22,000 students. We have 30 plus frats and sororities, 400 student clubs. We are NCAA, every sport except football, but in a lot of those 400 um, student clubs, there are a lot of kayaking clubs and just things, everything you can think of. We have beaches, we have surfing, um, and we do have 70 minors. So there's, you're going to be able to acclimate and find yourself is, is the point. So we'll kind of move past some of this and just kind of speak briefly to diversity. So diversity is so diverse at USC that we actually don't have racial or ethnic uh, majority. We do try to keep our student faculty rate to about 18 to one guys so that you get that one-on-one -on -one attention. And then from international to out of state to first generational, um, you're going to find a match at USC. We actually have a mandatory first year class that really acclimates you to class, lets you meet different people. And I promise you, even for those of you that worry about being so far from home, these classes, being in the residence halls, which will speak to all of that, it's going to help you find yourself. So as far as residence halls, we have about eight. You do not, you're not mandated to live on campus even as a freshman, which is very rare. Laundry is free though, so it's definitely a perk. This will probably be my favorite dorm because it has a Starbucks in it and it's just super fancy. Um, our students actually run the Starbucks. These are some of the majors that we spoke of guys. And one of the biggest things I encourage you no matter what your major is to um, try to do volunteerism and do do social good so we really promote students doing that because it's going to help you it'll help you make friends and it helps you on future resumes some of this 412 million that you see really inspires um is inspired by professors but it also helps as far as scholarships etc so we're really big on you doing research we actually have a $2,500 research stipend that's offered this is our school code guys 001776 and um the merit scholarship is the biggest tuition scholarship that most students take advantage of but if you email me at admissions at usc um, edu i'm happy to give you ample scholarship opportunities we are on the common app we're test optional for fall 21 22 if you um we have a 60 dollars fee or an app waiver if you need it don't be embarrassed and these are some of the things we're looking for um we do a holistic view of um each student we almost have 100 majors so each major is different but these are some of the things we're looking for and then um these are our dates some of them may change due to covid but those are kind of general dates and this is our in-state and out-of-state tuition. The Merit Scholarship makes our tuition comparable to what you might pay at a UC school. And I'm happy to go over this more, you know, in one-on-one -on -one terms with you, but we also lock tuition in for four years. Again, every sport except football, these are some of the fun ones. We give out sports tickets to some of the Bulls, Blackhawk games, et cetera. But overall, I want to thank you for your time. You can discover me at discover.usc.edu and I'm going to put my contact info on the side and we are very much diversity and LBGTQ friendly. So thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Nita. Okay, next up we are going to the University of Alaska Anchorage. Hey everyone, thanks so much for having me. I am really excited to uh, be with you all tonight and share with you just a little bit about the University of Alaska Anchorage. And remember that this is just an introduction and I really hope to speak to all of you personally and give you even more information in the future. So UAA uh, is in Anchorage, Alaska. So uh, we are the state's largest city of approximately 300,000 people. So what that means is we're in what we call the urban wild. So yes, you have access to all of that beautiful nature that Alaska is known for. You can see the glaciers and the Northern Lights. We have really interesting elective courses in things like ice climbing and dog sledding. Uh, and you can even uh, catch the Iditarod as it runs through our downtown.
but we do have a downtown and our downtown is thriving. Uh, plenty of opportunities for concerts and um, really enjoying all that you kind of think of when you think of a city. Uh, so you're certainly not in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we ha uh, have hundreds of miles of trail that are intertwined kind of around the city. And we're also one of the best campuses for snowboarding in the West. On campus, we are a mid-sized public comprehensive university, which means that we have about 12,000 students and we can offer over a hundred clubs. So lots of things to do to find really what you're interested in uh, and find people that are interested in the same things. We have also a one to 16 faculty student ratio, which means that about half of our classes have less than 20 students, which is pretty unheard of at one of these large uh, comprehensive public universities. So again, we are kind of that balance of the best of both worlds. In terms of academics, because we are a large university, you can find probably any program that you're interested in studying. We have uh, programs um, in our specific colleges and we have distinct colleges for things like business, engineering, health, um, sciences, uh, and even our community in technical education where you can learn something like professional piloting. Uh, if you don't know what you want to study, uh, UAA can really be a great place because undecided, or we call it exploratory studies, is one of our most popular freshman majors. So definitely lots of ways to explore your amazing story in terms of academics at UAA. And we're also ranked number one for long-term return on investments amongst our peer institutions. And essentially what that means is that not only are we offering that high quality education that I was talking about, but it's at a price that's affordable for students. Uh, and so uh, we offer WUI tuition to all of our students from California. That's going to be um, in kind of the $10,000, $11,000 range, which is actually less than the sticker price for the University of California. So by choosing to go out of state to go to UAA, you actually have the potential to save money every year. So it kind of dispels that myth that it's always cheaper to stay in state. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the opportunities for adventure that UAA offers outside of Alaska, because I know that students who choose to go to UAA are seeking adventure. And so we certainly have opportunities for study abroad um, we also have a national student exchange, which is a really exciting way to study abroad because you pay essentially the same tuition, um, but you're maybe studying in a different state like uh, Hawaii or Las Vegas for a semester, or you can even go as far away as Puerto Rico. Uh, we also have international exchange programs um, with countries like Scotland, and we're one of the few universities in the world that get to participate in the North to North exchange. So if you're interested in Arctic studies, climate studies, it can be an excellent place for you. I'd like to invite you all to check out uh, UAA online. We have some excellent virtual resources that we've developed. You can take a virtual tour or you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and an admissions counselor and we can walk you through that tour and answer all of your questions one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we also have something called the Fireside Chat Series, uh, where you can actually meet our alumni or our students in their different themes every week. So you can find that on our website. I'll definitely drop some links in the chat for you all here. And I really look forward to helping you all become future Seawolves. Great, thank you. Okay, next up we are going to Elon University with Mandy. Sorry, it didn't let me share. Did it go through? It did. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mandy Corcoran. I'm the Regional Assistant Director for Admissions. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm one of two reps that we have here um, in the state of California. So um, Elon is located in Elon, North Carolina, which is in the heart of North Carolina. We are a true college town, um, and we are considered a suburb of the city of Burlington, which is the larger city where you get your Target run, your bigger box stores, things like that. And we have a free shuttle that takes you there. We're within 45 minutes of two major airports, one in Greensboro and one in Raleigh, also really convenient for internships and opportunities to take advantage of the rest of the state. Um, as for different programs, 
we um, really have, again, we are a mid-sized private liberal arts university so that makes up our core. And we have a focus on global citizenship within our four different schools and colleges. Um, so we have strong programs in the liberal arts like psychology, biology, theater, and music production. We have a top 50 business school with strong programs in finance, accounting, and entrepreneurship. Um, we have a school of communications, which is one of a handful of um, top accredited school of communications known for its strengths in journalism, cinema and television arts, and sports management. And then finally, we have our school of education, which is um, has hands-on teaching for students in their first year. So getting you that hands-on learning in the classroom um, right away. We really encourage major and minor exploration across our curriculum. Um, and uh, one of our students' absolute favorite things is that um, they have access to all of our curriculum. They don't need to apply separately um, to each of our different schools. So if you want to explore a business major or you want to major in that, you simply just change your major or sign up for a class or pick up a major minor combination. We really like that cross-curricular exploration. So you have an idea of where we're at, let's talk about our community a little bit. Um, we um, have just under 6,300 6, undergraduates and an out-of-state population of 80%. So the majority of our students are coming from out-of-state. Um, and consistently, California is actually our number 10 state that we are getting um, applicants from and students from. Um, and uh, we have such a growing West Coast student population that we now have a West Coast student ambassador team to chat with you about their experience of being West Coast students at Elon. 70% uh, of our students do live on campus all four years. We have a two year living requirement, but again, safe for students to live on all four years and you can bring your car um, from your first year uh, to campus. Um, they live in our eight residential neighborhoods and our neighborhoods have themes, um, some based on leadership and civic engagement, things like that. So you have that connection and that easy transition to school because of those commonalities. We have over 284 clubs and organizations and 17 division one sports. So you will not get bored at Elon. Most of our students are involved in about two to three organizations outside of the classroom. So talking about the inside the outside the classroom experience and how that relates to our outcomes, let's explore this a little bit further. So inside the classroom, we have an average class size of 20, a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one, and 100% of our classes are taught by faculty, and all of our classes are capped at 33. So you are never going to have those large lecture courses taught by teaching assistants. You're always going to be able to have direct access to your faculty, to be able to ask questions, and to really become uh, kind of a master of um, your, um, your studies. This really allows our faculty and all of us at Elon to really lean into our philosophy of teaching through mentoring. And I always like to joke that you kind of collect mentors on your way at Elon that then lead to your um, you know, amazing opportunities beyond Elon. Uh, one thing that does make us very unique is that all of our students are required to have experiential learning. And so what does that look like? This comes in the form of our Elon experiences where students have that hands-on experience now, all of these different things you're seeing in front of you are not unique to Elon. However, the fact that we require students to complete two out of the four of these, or two out of the five of these experiences before they graduate does make that unique to Elon. So let's break these down, break these down a little bit. Um, so we have study abroad, about 79% of our students complete study abroad, and about um, an additional 12% will do our study USA program, similar to the National Student Exchange that was talked about um, by uh, the University of Alaska. With that, um, we have the goal of every student on our campus being able to study abroad or have the opportunity to study abroad. And that does make us the number one private university in the nation for study abroad opportunities. For internships, about 88% of our students are completing internships, um, many of them out of state. So you can do those internships back here in California. 23% of our students are completing mentored one on one research, the student led. 87% um, of our students are completing service learning. We really believe in learning um, and giving back to your community. And then 55% hold a significant leadership, uh, leadership position on campus. This leads to these amazing outcomes. So 95% of our students are employed in graduate school, completing an internship or in a service organization. And 92% of those are related to their career objectives. So at Elon, you come, you explore all the different passions that you have, you find that passion, and then you make that your success story beyond uh, graduation. We really attribute a lot of this success also to our Student Professional Development Center, which is one of the best in the nation. And then finally, how do you become a member of the Elon family? Um, we have early decision, which is binding and early action um, applications, which are due November 1st. 
a regular decision is January 10th. These are all the different things that we're gonna be looking at um, in your application. And of course, the best way to get connected and show that demonstrated interest is to connect with me um, or Brittany Slaughter, who's in Southern California, um, who are your admissions counselors. I'd love to chat with you more. I'll put my contact information um, as well as the website where you can find those West Coast Student Ambassadors uh, that'll give you that student perspective. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Great, thank you, Mandy. Okay, next up, we are going to the University of Pittsburgh with Kelsey. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the city of Pittsburgh to start us out this evening. So I, first off, I'm Kelsey, um, the California Regional Admissions Counselor for Pitt. Um, and if you're not familiar with Pitt, we are located about three miles from downtown Pittsburgh in a wonderful neighborhood called Oakland. It is a very urban campus. You can tell you're in the city. It has the hustle and bustle shops and restaurants all around you. Yet we still have lots of green space on campus that makes it a wonderful place for you to have that blend of college town and urban environment. Um, if you're well within the city of Pittsburgh, there are lots of bridges. It is beautiful. Um, it's sports, arts, entertainment. There's anything you want to do in your free time, as well as outside the classroom. So lots of Fortune 500 companies that you can do internships with. You can volunteer, shadow, um, and build connections with while in Pittsburgh. Um, because we are an urban environment, we do give all of our students free public transportation. So you will not need a car when you come to campus. It is super easy to navigate all around the city to and from the airport um, and really take advantage of um, the area, not just on our campus, but also around our campus. So I'm going to dive into our academic opportunities and how that is structured at Pitt. So we have over 100 different majors for you to choose from at Pitt um, in a lot of different areas. We have around 19,000 undergraduate school students. So we are a medium to large size school, um, but it does feel smaller with a really close knit community. And that kind of bleeds in from the city of Pittsburgh. It's a welcoming city. Um, everyone is extremely friendly. They're proud of their city. And you really see that in all of our Panthers on campus. So we admit students into five freshman schools, although if you are not a current senior, um, there is a rumor that we will possibly have a sixth school coming this fall, so stay tuned for that. Um, but as of now, our largest school is gonna be our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, which houses over 60 different majors. Um, we have our School of Engineering, which has 10 different majors. Um, our College of Business Administration, which has an eight. School of Computing and Information, which is our fastest growing, and currently has four, um, and then I bet you you can guess our school of nursing only has one major within any of those schools you can choose multiple majors you can switch majors there's nothing impacted so we really encourage you to explore and figure out what is of most interest to you we also want you to figure out outside the classroom how you can apply what you're learning with from inside the classroom. So we have lots of different academic opportunities for you to take advantage of. We have a guaranteed internship program for all students at Pitt. So we want you to get that work experience and that could also include a co-op um, or experiential learning experience if that's something you're more interested in. We do have undergraduate research. So we are top five in the country for funding, um, giving our students just under a billion dollars every year. So if you're a health science major, um, this might be some really good news, but if, even if you're a music or an art major, we have research for everyone. So if you're interested in that, Pitt is a great place to explore it starting as early as freshman year. We also have six teaching hospitals on our campus. Um, so you can you know, shadow anyone in that health field um, and get some really good hands-on experiences as well as over 350 study abroad programs. So we want you to have that global aspect to your education as well. And now the fun part about being a Pitt student is it going to be that student life. At Pitt, we have hundreds of student organizations for you to choose from. So that is one benefit of going to a larger school um, is that probably any interest you have, you can find a student organization or two or three that you can become a part of. We guarantee housing. So this is gonna be another opportunity for you to kind of have that family and home away from home on campus um, for you to connect with other students, including 18 different living learning communities um, and all different styles of housing. If you're interested in the arts, Pitt Arts is a wonderful program for you to get involved in, um, and that kind of connect, 
connects within the entire city of Pittsburgh. So concerts, Broadway shows, um, professionals within the art industry. Um, so it is a really cool thing uh, for our students to do. And we also have division one sports. So if you want a school with a lot of school spirit, um, win or lose, you will find that at Pitt. And now to finish up, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about how to become a Panther. Um, we are test optional in all programs. Um, and the most important thing to remember is we are rolling admission. So applying early is gonna be super beneficial to you. You can apply on three different platforms. Our application opens August 1st. Um, it's pretty simple for you to do. Um, we do have optional short answer questions that we strongly recommend, especially for scholarship consideration, um, as well as a self-reported academic record uh, and a few important deadlines. So they do change every year. So these were our deadlines for this past year. But if you are an upcoming um, senior in the fall or even you know in the next coming fall, um, and pay attention to those deadlines so that you can stay right on track. Um, but that is uh, all I have to share for today. So thank you all so much for coming um, and learning about Pitt. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Great, thank you, Kelsey. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we are going to Corinne with Marist College. Okay, whoops, there we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, thank you so very much. Greatly appreciate being here. Uh, leave the last to me uh, to end the evening. So my name is Corinne Schell and I'm director of West Coast Admission at Marist College, which is located in New York, about an hour and a half north of New York City. However, we are about a half a mile from the train station. So our students will take advantage of internship opportunities, especially down in, in New York. Uh, the picture that you're looking at here is of our campus from the Hudson River. I refer to it as the Academic Country Club. It's an absolutely stunning campus uh, with very strong academics, as well as a wonderful opportunity for students to get involved with clubs and organizations and uh, attend sporting events. And in Poughkeepsie is Vassar College, which is about six miles across campus or across town from us. There's a community college in town, the Culinary Institute of America is about a mile up the road. We also have Bard College about a half hour north. There's a state university half hour west and the uh, Military Academy at West Point is about an uh, hour south across the river. So just to give you a little bit, bit of background information, uh, we are known as the Marist Red Foxes. So here's some fox facts. We are a little over 5,100 undergraduate students. We offer over 40 different majors. However, we're a strong liberal arts school. So for students to come in as an undecided major, uh, that's absolutely fine. You'll have up until the end of the second semester of your sophomore year to determine what you would really like to study. Our student body is represented from 47 different states, 64 different countries, and our student to teacher ratio is a 16 to one. The maximum class size you will ever have is 35. And that would be for your core. Once you get more into your particular field of study, you'll have anywhere from 5, 10, 15, 20 students in a class. 96% uh, of our incoming freshmen live on campus. The other 4% are a traditional commuter that live home with their family. Uh, music to a parent's ear, 98% of our students upon graduation within six months are employed or in grad school, uh, which is amazing. Here's a listing of the different majors that we offer. Some very popular majors are business administration. We actually have an investment center uh, on campus where our students are trading on Wall Street Monday through Friday, and they're trading with real money. Uh, we have excellent mentor programs with alumni who work in the industries down in Manhattan, who do networking programs, not only to assist our students with internship opportunities, but even with employment upon graduation. Uh, communications is also popular, everything from public relations, sports communication, advertising, <coughs> excuse me, uh, our computer science program is amazing. 90% of those students have jobs before they even uh, enter their senior year. And our fashion program is absolutely amazing, both fashion design and fashion merchandising. One of our alums runs New York City Fashion Week, so our students are actively participating in that. We also have media studies in film and television, interactive media, game design, political science, and we are in the historic Hudson River Valley. 
So our students that uh, are history and political science majors have access to the presidential papers and archives at the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Museum and Presidential Library in Hyde Park, which is about five miles up the road. And then internships, the only school that it's required is social and behavioral science, so criminal justice, social work, psychology, and our uh, psychology degree with dual certification in elementary ed and special ed grades one through six. But we have at least 83% of our students will do at least one internship. And to me, that makes the biggest difference with students uh, obtaining employment upon graduation. And then we uh, do have an amazing study abroad program. We offer semester programs, full year programs. We have two short term, one between the fall and the spring semester. And then we also have a spring attachment where students are on ground in class for the spring and then they'll take off to the country or countries that they've been learning about at the end of the spring semester. And then we also have a campus in Florence, Italy. So our students have the opportunity to study abroad in Florence as an incoming freshman or even in Dublin, Ireland at the Dublin Business College. Excuse me. <clears throat> a lot of information in such a quick period of time. Uh, we are division one for sports. We have 23 varsity, 12 women, 11 men. We also have 16 club sports, everything from uh, ice hockey, equestrian, cheerleading, uh, men's and women's rugby uh, and men's volleyball. However, our, our intramural program is very, very strong because not every student wants to do a D1 sport. Uh, as you can see here, the women are taking the crew boat down to the Hudson River. Well over 80 different clubs and organizations we offer our students. And we do things like uh, Broadway trips to New York for $25, get you down to the city. You're sitting in orchestra seats for the programs, everything from Dear Evan Hansen to The Lion King. Uh, wicked, so great, great shows, but lots of other different programs. Residential life, uh, housing on the left is for our upper class housing. Uh, those are suite style, four in a suite, four bedrooms, so everybody has their own room. 90% uh, of our students that wanna live on campus do. And then here's the information about applying to Marist. We are on the Common App. We also have our own Marist app and then the coalition and then our deadlines are over there. And then here is my contact information if you have any additional questions. One other thing I just wanted to mention is that we have an amazing support program for learning disability, uh, one of the finest in the country uh, and our study abroad is also big. So that's it and I put my contact information in the chat. Perfect, thank you, Corinne. Okay, well that wraps up our formal presentations for this evening, but we have a few extra minutes in our session, so I'm going to ask all of our presenters if you want to turn your cameras back on, um, and we will um, go through a few questions here at the end. Um, so the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And so we'll go in the same order that you presented in the first time. I can't remember who that was. Does anyone know? <laughs> Let me look. Um, Caitlin was first, but I know she had to. Oh, yes, off. she did hop off early. Okay, so Nita, I believe you are up now. So I would say, especially if you can't visit campus, guys, you're going to resonate with the admissions counselor. That'll give you a great feel on what to expect. And then I would just say, don't count things out. I was an out of state student and I really had to do things independently, but if there's a will, there's a way. So just try to, you know, get a feel for the location. Even if you can't visit your decision, everything's happens for a reason. So don't put too much pressure on yourself during this process. Those are probably my top two points. I would suggest stepping outside your comfort zone. University is an excellent time to take a trip somewhere that you want to go and see a lot of different places to really choose where you're, you're gonna make your final decision. And then it's a fun opportunity to live somewhere different. No other time in your life is it going to be kind of as easy as it is to uh, get to another place and, and stay there and check it out, and study abroad and things like that. So it does, it can definitely seem daunting, um, but it will be worth it and it will help you grow. Um, I always tell students that, um, you know, to try to take that pressure off yourself in the sense that there is no wrong decision. Choosing an education and furthering your knowledge is always a great decision. 
Um, and so making sure that you're focusing on how you feel um, about a college, you know, we all have, as you heard tonight, amazing accolades and opportunities and things to offer you. Of course, you wanna make sure we have your major and things that you're interested in studying. But when it comes to, you know, trying to make that final decision or kind of narrowing down your list, um, you know, again, take that pressure off yourself. Like we um, all are offering something amazing and there is no wrong um, decision. Um, and definitely back here, but Nita said, like lean on us admissions counselors. Um, yes, we're here representing different universities, but we're just here to help you find that fit and to find your home. Um, so, you know, just know that, that we're ready to support you throughout the journey, whether you choose our college or not. And from Marist, I have to agree with all of the above. They, great, they gave some really great responses. I will also add in, have fun with the process. Um, it can be super stressful, but your senior year should be something fun. Um, you should, you know, enjoy right, when you're visiting colleges, even just virtually um, grab a bowl of popcorn and kind of make it an experience. So don't forget to have fun in the process because um, it'll go by really fast. Perfect, thanks. Great advice, everyone. Okay, next up is what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? So I know many of you covered this already, but feel free to expand on that or talk about another example. Um, and we'll kick it back over to Nita. Yeah, I would definitely say Spark in the Park, just, you know, celebrities. And we try at the University of Illinois Chicago to get top name celebrities that you actually like, not someone from 1972. So just having those events where students can gather together and even offsite, just the taste of Chicago and some of the um, events that resonate with Chicago, with Chicago itself, Lollapalooza, those are events that our students absolutely adore, but Spark in the Park is our big one. And we just want you guys to have fun. Academics are nice and, you know, learning things, et cetera, but the college is all about the experience and who you meet. So have fun with it, as was said. I am going to plug Seawolf hockey. So um, I think it's really wonderful to see a hockey match in Alaska and it's really part of our school spirit. So that's kind of where I, I go when, I, when I'm there. Um, I would say they're the luminaries on our campus. So we all come together for a lighting ceremony of our campus. There's lights put out all over um, our beautiful campus. Um, and um, it's done around um, kind of the, the holiday-ish season. So, um, you know, right before our winter break. And the point of it is to kind of light as a community um, up all of the diversity and um, of whether it's traditions or thought or um, religion or um, you know, all the diversity that is our campus to celebrate all of that. And so it's a beautiful thing where we all come together and create that community and everybody always does it, shines a light on the community that we love so much at Elon. Um, my favorite tradition at Pitt, um, I would say, is when our victory lights turn on. So we have a 43-story um, building on campus. It is called the Cathedral of Learning. Um, and every time we win a home football game, it shoots lights up into the sky that evening. I um, mean, you can see them from all over the city. And it, it just kind of you feel the energy on campus when that goes on. And um, it's something that kind of always gives you a little bit of chills because you're excited and proud. Um, so it's a small tradition, but something I love on Pitt's campus. Thanks. Um, well, at Marist, there's a couple of things that I think are traditions and, and fun are football games and basketball games. Uh, and the uh, I have to say the lighting of the Christmas tree. Uh, that is a huge thing around the holidays. And it's just amazing of all the students, faculty, staff that come out and kind of gather around the tree. And it's just... Uh, one big happy Marist College Red Fox family. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of school spirit, which I think is amazing. Great, well, thank you all so much for sharing. Thank you students to for, for joining us. Thank you panelists for presenting. Um, students, uh, when you close this Zoom window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind completing that, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered this evening. So check that StriveScan website where you signed up for additional sessions you might be interested in after this. 
And then we will be posting all the session recordings there within about a week or so as well. So thanks again for being here. Have a good evening and we will see you in the next session. Thank you.